Hello, thanks for joining this session. I am going to talk about the evolution of next row workflow system. Before we start, a quick presentation about me. I am Paolo Di Tommaso, I'm a software engineer and computer scientist, and I'm the creator and maintainer on next row open source project and the CTO of Secure Labs, that the company I co-founded with Evan Floden for to develop this technology. Let's start with a quick overview about the project. NextFlow is a scientific workflow management system that provides a runtime and a DSL, that is a domain-specific language, that allows the writing on data analysis pipelines in a portable scalable manner. Tasks can execute any existing tools or script without the need to learn the OSIN present language. So, for example, in your pipeline, you can have a task written in Bash and another one written in Python or Perl because it may provide a simple solution to the specific problem of the task. Key aspect on NextFlow is the data flow programming paradigm on which it is based that makes it possible to declare the task dependencies and above all the parallelization in a declarative manner so that the execution of the pipeline is driven by the data that is provided to the pipeline itself. Another key feature of NextFlow is the ability to isolate task dependencies with containers so that each task execution corresponds to a pre-configured container execution which makes it possible to run the pipeline in a portable and reproducible manner. Finally, NextFlow pipelines are platform agnostic in the meaning that the same pipeline code can be deployed on a large range of infrastructure from a laptop to massive scalable cloud environment with minimal or no change at all in the code. Let's have a quick look at the most recent changes in the tool. The past year, we have added the support for modularization, actually it was presented here at the BOSS conference, so that now NextFlow pipelines can define and use libraries or reusable tasks and some workflows. This represents a very important milestone for the project because it makes the resulting pipelines much more flexible and easier to be maintained. Other to this, recently we have also added the, su the support for Azure Batch, that's a computing service in the Azure Cloud, so that now next two pipelines can be deployed seamlessly in all major cloud providers, that is Amazon, Google, and Azure. Finally, on language level, recently we have added the support for a new feature that we call Stub Run Execution. Uh, that you may think as a way to simulate the pipeline execution using a kind of virtual task. To some extent, this is an alternative to the lock in Expo or the dry run feature, but above all, we think that's a great way to enable fast prototyping of your pipeline, easy validation of the pipeline deployment cloud infrastructure. But I don't want to talk much about this, and I want to focus instead in this presentation on the new NextFlow plugin system. The past year, we have invested a lot of time in a major refactoring of the NextFlow code base to implement a new plugin architecture. Using this approach, now all non-core functionality are implemented as plugin components, like, for example, the support for the cloud or the implementation of Global Alliance API, the support for NextFlow Tower, etc. All these are now plugins that interact with the uh, core NextFlow tool. Basically, the plugin system allows the implementation of NextFlow executors or the auditing, auditing of workflow events and metrics. And in the future, also, it will provide the possibility to create new channel operator or data sources for NextFlow. Why we think this is very important for the community? Because this opens the possibility for the creation of third part components and the ultimate goal is to promote an ecosystem of extension, new functionality driven by the community on Nextflow developers to extend the capability of the core runtime, maybe adding the support for new platform or data provider or data formats, or even something that has not yet been taught. And to show the, 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 the potential of this mechanism, today I want to introduce also a new plugin on which we are uh, working that allows the connection to SQL databases. Nextflow does not have a native support for, uh, for database because we wanted to have the tool to work in a kind of serverless way, so just download the run without having to store anything. But still, there, is, there are a lot of use cases in which the use database can be useful to, to, to query external dataset and just pipeline metadata. 
So imagine that we have a database table like this, and that can represent a model, a sample sheet for your pipeline execution. There is a column that represents the sample name that you want to that you want to use, and then uh, other two columns that can, can can contain the file part or the read period that you want to use in your pipeline, and maybe other column with other metadata, but this is not an important point now. So what if we want to query this database table from Nextflow? Well, now using this plugin, what you can do is just write a SQL query to extract the column that you want to use. So for example, here we have select sample fastq1, fastq2 from that table. And then you can also add some where uh, constraint that allows you to select only uh, some part of the, of the table. This is just a variable, a string variable that we can use into a new command that is made available from the plugin. So when you use the plugin, the channel has new scope, that is .sql, that provides a method that is from query. So basically we can create a channel running this query against database and do all the magic transforming the, the query result set into the appropriate next flow uh, channel structure so that we can use the result of this like any other channel into an Nextflow pipeline. And this makes it possible to trigger the execution of the task or any other task in your pipeline. And this is the, the main idea. Of course, we can support many databases. So far, we have the built in support for MySQL, uh, MariaDB, Postgre, PostgreSQL. But technically, it's possible to support any other uh, relational database for which there is a suitable driver. And um, so the last point could be, OK, but how we can define the connection database? Like any, anything else in Nextflow, this part of the information uh, is specified into the pipeline configuration file. Here we have uh, declared that we want to use the data source that is MySQL. So into the next flow configuration file, we will find the definition of this data source with the same name, where there are specified the connection attribute to, 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 to connect the database. In this case, we are using a local MySQL instance, but this can be a remote instance, and then the usual attributes that are the username, the password, etc. So I think this makes uh, give you a clear idea what we are going to do, what this plugin allows to do, and to run SQL query into uh, into Nextflow pipelines, but also the potential of the plugin system. And this concludes my presentation. I hope you have enjoyed it, and thanks for watching. Also, I want to give some credit to Francesco Strozzi and Raul Bonan for many ideas they have contributed about the support for SQL and database into Nextflow. Thanks a lot, and happy to take some questions if any.